I know just a little when I get back. Because he works commission. This is real important. This is his job. So if you go back and buy something, even a magazine, it would it really help. Plus the vision, Jenny, that you had, that you had about a music collection. Check out. We've got this lullabies of the soul here. It's a collection of beautiful lullabies that uh, soothes your babies and keeps the parents interested at the same time. Which I think is a marvelous feat. I have one thing I wanted to have a question because there's an aspiring midwife here. Who, uh, I wanted to see if you had a question yeah. about anything that we said tonight that you wanted to learn more about. Oh, I don't have any questions. I just, um, it's a little overwhelming of the plethora of um, differing perspectives on birth. Like, I'm just, I'm really glad to have been exposed to what everyone here is uh, sharing just so I can digest it and incorporate it into what I'm learning. That's my comment. <laughs> well, thank you for your um, omnivorous curiosity. You're willing to explore this because I, I find that uh, my sister midwives are sometimes the most resistant to hearing why they're fully dispensable when it comes to birth. Can you imagine? I mean, you study and you train, you invest all of this energy, and then a couple says to you, but we don't really want you to do anything. It's really hard. And going through medical training, by the way, you are going to be inculcated with medical, doctor, I got to do stuff kind of energy. I mean, that comes with the territory. <laughs> actually, um, I've been reading midwifery today, and I had actually, I never really heard of you before, but I just read an article about Lotus Birth, so interestingly enough. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, a week ago, I just... I just read about Lotus Birth, so and I don't know I'm here, but I was so amazed by it, reading about that, and um, and then I was really intrigued by it. And there was an, I don't know if it was the same article, but it was another one about um, this midwife talking about different stories. Basically, her intention was to move more and more out of the way. Of she was having you know families where she wasn't like she wasn't there. Was basically, kind of like what you were describing about maybe like, Gloria LeMay. I don't really remember names. There's so many different names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just very hands-on. I mean, so many people read that magazine, and it's there's lots of different stories about different families that are having births on their own, and really um, expressing it in a heartfelt way. And it seemed, um, I I really enjoyed their joy of what they were doing. And so yeah, I'm glad I'm here. Great. I found that for me, birth is a direct conduit to ecstasy. So when I'm not having my babies attending births of others, I just plug right into that current of love. So I was like a birth junkie. I'm making confession here. I'm, I'm through my recovery program now. My name is Janine. Yeah, my name is Janine. <laughs> and I've been involved in a two-step program here. And the second step, because we're not to take things personally around this issue. But with the <laughs> phone rings, I, I mean, even, I didn't even think about it. Shall I have an orgasm? Shall I answer the phone in the middle of the night? I just go for the phone because it was a birth. It might be a birth. And then I'm leaving this guy. Well, actually, not you. I took you with me to birth. My first husband. Hear that. But the other thing I like to do is I go around to midwife groups and I ask, how many of you are still married? They're leaving their beds in the middle of the night to attend to other people's sexuality. And did you know that midwives and prostitutes worshipped at the same altar? And that's our Western tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because midwifery is the second oldest profession on the earth, isn't it? And it is involved, once we turn the angle of the mind and start acknowledging when we bring the husbands back into this, that this is a sexual experience. It's not only a woman's mystery, it was a woman's mystery, how did it even get started in the first place? <laughs> it's your part then, Janet. Yep. I have another question. Um, I don't think I need to go up. Okay. Um, my question is that I've had some doubts about midwifery lately, and mainly because um, I just spend. It's a lot to get us from our our garden. Jenny, you pulled together something that's just so important for me. So what the healing that's coming in our partnership, and remembering what drew us together in the first place, I think it's invaluable to me. And I want to honor you, and I want to honor Paul, because out behind every great woman, there's a man. And you're the man. <laughs> Actually, to put up with all of this for so long, it's because he knows what it's like when you're married to a birth junkie. 
remember that darkness when you mentioned the M word. I know it gives me the creep. No, I love midwives and that's, that's, I want to finish the conference on this note. There is place in all of our world for midwives, for unassisted birthers, and for obstetricians. There are those situations in home births where a woman just simply has to have a C-section. A placenta previa, a prolapsed cord sometimes, and it's our job as parents and as people promoting unassisted birth to teach parents that they need to learn to listen to that inner voice. And the inner voice will hopefully keep them safer than if they didn't listen. It's no guarantee that everything will be well. I'm, I'm a perfect example of that. We had an 11-pound baby boy at home unassisted, and we um, had to have a transfer to the hospital afterwards because we had some problems. And there's no guarantees in this life, but if we will listen and be in tune, we can have better outcomes. And we don't want to diss on any profession or um, make midwives or obstetricians feel bad about their, their life's profession. All we're saying is just give us the freedom to pursue this as well. Our final event for the conference is tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. There's a potluck breakfast up at the Annette Brand Park. If you haven't gotten one of these um, directions to the park, I've got some extra ones here. This, the point of this is just to fellowship, is to share testimonies of birth stories and to um, just have a, a more casual atmosphere where we can just kind of hang out. And so I invite any of you who'd like to join. Some of us are going to go to church at 11 o'clock. If you want to join us, you'd be so welcome to just come to church with us at 11. But um, that's our final event. This is all we have to offer, but thank you for coming. Thank you.